3,000 infected, 80 dead. The numbers are rising quadratically in terms of deaths and infections, it's beginning to look like an epidemic. Professor Gabriele Leung of Hong Kong University has estimated that there are already 44,000 cases in Wuhan. A number consistent with the all estimated 50,000 beds being occupied. 52 million in quarantine and basically a shutdown of China's major holiday, make me think the numbers don't match the extraordinary actions being taken. Shut down the economy, seal off cities, risk a national and global financial crash to save the old and the sick in communist China. This virus is nothing ordinary, and I suspect it's a military-grade weaponized virus. Epidemiologists are suggesting the virus in US is fourth generation. The fact that international borders remain open at this time, while China has closed the Wuhan city borders, is suspicious. Could this virus be used to provide an excuse for the coming economic disaster which the bankers and deep state created? This virus can also be used to get rid of a lot of pensioners and folks on social security. This may be the perfect time to let the markets fall and blame it on Corona. That way Trump cannot be blamed. Later in the year, the Fed can engineer another market rise in time for the election. This should work in a country that has the 15 minute attention span and memory of a four year old. Nothing to see here. Just the flu. But the Chinese risk crashing their economy, whose creation has been job number one for over 30 years. It doesn't quite add up. Now things are getting interesting. When the Chinese put off the opportunity to make money, you know something's going on. And not one single mention in the press that this could be an escaped bioweapon stolen from Canada. As CBC reported that a Chinese bio-researcher, and her husband, who were working with this virus in the Canadian Level 4 bio lab, were escorted out of the lab country and deported back to China last July. The virus suddenly appears in Wuhan, where the Chinese couple continued their work as Wuhan gets its Level 4 bio lab. Then the communist government seals of entire cities and shuts down the freaking economy. It's not the money printing, demographics, etc. that will be bringing down the world economy this time. It's the Wu-Tang flu. Not a world war this time. We'll use a flu pandemic Wuhan as cover. coronavirus as a novel virus. No one has any immunity to it, so everybody is vulnerable to it. It appears to be airborne, no matter what WHO is saying, it appears to be highly communicable. There is a long incubation period of up to 14 days, with the average being about 10. It is contagious before symptoms appear, so people are spreading it around while they are feeling fine, going to the office, going to Home Depot, going to the movies, and are unaware they are infected and contagious. Then they get sick and within a few days get much sicker, become frightened and go to the emergency room, masses of them at the same time. Health and emergency services go first, followed closely by everything else. Even if the morbidity, mortality rate is fairly low, and I'm not entirely convinced of that, the ensuing shutdown of everything is, in itself, dangerous. With help unavailable, people are going to die of what are, under normal circumstances, easily treatable misadventures like appendicitis, infected wounds, complications of childbirth, etc. or acts of violence in a time of anarchy. There are only about three days worth of food at any one time, in any city and the shelves in stores are going to be bare. Clean, potable water might become a problem. The power grid could go down. Do you see what I'm getting at here? It wouldn't hurt to have at least a few weeks of emergency supplies on hand. And what makes this disease so difficult for me to evaluate is that I do not trust the official numbers coming out of China. The CCP sees this as a political dilemma and not a health care issue. What makes it even more tricky is how to handle the public relations disaster that will result if it turns out that the virus was actually stolen from a Canadian research facility and intentionally weaponized. They will lie to save face. They will lie to retina control of the population. Basically, the Chinese government is not trustworthy in this situation, and it is not unreasonable to assume the worst case with this disease. The perfect virus was ready for some time. It spreads very well. It is lethal at the right point because if it is too lethal, it stops spreading. The paranoia with Iran has ended, and they are now ready to carry out mass extermination. I don't see how it can be stopped. Indeed in the general chaos other viruses will spread, it's the end. Irrational exuberance in the markets is at a peak, or close to it. Something will trigger a panic eventually. 
It might be this flu outbreak, if not, a torpedoed tanker in the Strait of Hormuz, terrorists blowing up a building, Deutsche Bank going belly up, a politician getting assassinated, Greta Thornburg losing her virginity, something. It won't take much to start the repricing of risk assets to the downside. The black swan appears. They, the 1%, the Illuminati whatever you want to call them, will not admit the truth until we, the little people, are all in danger of becoming infected. If it gets really bad, they will bail for New Zealand or fall back estates and gated communities closer to home. China is indeed in a grave situation, like Xi says. They stole viruses, possibly this virus, and worked on weaponizing them in Wuhan. Maybe accidental release because the facility is Chinese-made, Chinese-controlled. The following story was published by CBC.ca on July 14, 2019. Dr. Shangguo Chu, her husband, Keting Cheng, and an unknown number of her students from China were removed from Canada's only Level 4 lab on July 5, CBC News has learned. A Level 4 virology facility is a lab equipped to work with the most serious and deadly human and animal diseases. That makes this lab one of only a handful in North America capable of handling pathogens requiring the highest level of containment, such as Ebola. The top researcher got removed with her staff. When I heard that story during the summer, I was like, huh? Such a high-profile case of espionage? Barely a mention anywhere. Worked with the most sensitive of materials and traveled to Wuhan at least five times. There is no doubt that these events are related. That's what the fuss is about. That's why World Health Organization and all are downplaying this because, as people, why are we allowing this dangerous crap to be researched in the first place? I thought the Geneva Convention had taken care of this after World War I and the mustard gas shellings. So researcher with ties to China which was recently escorted out of the National Microbiology Lab, NML in Winnipeg amid an RCMP investigation into what's being described as a possible policy breach. Security access for the couple and the Chinese students was revoked. Sources say this comes several months after IT specialists for the NML entered Chu's office after hours and replaced her computer. Her regular trips to China also started being denied. At meetings on July 8, NML staff were told the researchers are on leave for an unknown period of time. They were told not to communicate with them. Chu is a prominent virologist who helped develop ZMAP, a treatment for the deadly Ebola virus which killed more than 11,000 people in West Africa between 2014 to 2016. She worked with Gary Kobinger, who is now a professor in the Department of Microbiology and Infectious Diseases and director of the Research Center on Infectious Diseases at Laval University in Quebec. The researcher and her assistances were escorted from the Infectious Disease Lab but not arrested. While there are few details available, experts say this could be a case of intellectual property theft or technology leakage to China. The National Microbiology Laboratory would have some pretty sensitive biological research material that could be shared either with or without authorization with foreign countries, said Gordon Holden, director of the University of Alberta's China Institute. The Chinese biological warfare facilities collaborated with Dr. Shangguo Chu within the context of Ebola virus. The Institute of Military Veterinary joined a study on the Rift Valley fever virus, too. While the Institute of Microbiology joined a study on Marburg virus. Dr. Shangguo Chu also collaborated in 2018 with three scientists from the U.S. Army Medical Research Institute of Infectious Diseases, in Maryland, studying post-exposure immunotherapy for two Ebola viruses and Marburg virus in monkeys, a study supported by the U.S. Defense Threat Reduction Agency. Dr. Shangguo Chu made at least five trips over the school year 2017-18 to the above-mentioned Wuhan National Biosafety Laboratory of the Chinese Academy of Sciences, which was certified for BSL-4 in January 2017. Moreover, in August 2017, the National Health Commission of China approved research activities involving Ebola, Nipah, and Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever viruses at the Wuhan facility. It seems the Chinese got reckless with the virus and released it on the people of Wuhan. However, I got suspicious of the timing of this. I suspect the Chinese fell into a trap which was set up by the deep state with Bill Gates as the facilitator. This could be an intentional bio-weapons release. Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and others predicted up to 65 million deaths via coronavirus, in simulation ran three months ago. 
The UK, too, seems to have taken the lead on creating and generating the disease coronavirus. Circo Patent Office in the UK approved it November 20, 2018, filed back in July 23, 2015, and the assignee on patent per Bright Institute. This assignee of this patent was the government-funded per Bright Institute out of the UK. This could also be a bioweapon that was released by the Pentagon on China. Since 2017, the Pentagon has been known to operate biological laboratories around the world that are located on the borders of Russia, China, and Iran. Therefore, at least it cannot be excluded that the United States released the Chinese Arcanemia virus in order to test its deadly virus on humans or even simply to want to kill large numbers of people. In recent years, the United States has established itself as the number one mass murderer, who created entire terrorist militias such as Al-Qaeda or ISIS across borders, before rushing to help as a rescuer from terrorism as a global police force. In light of these connections, such a presumption of the spread of deadly viruses in China and around the world is initially an abstruse conspiracy theory for the Western press owned by the United States, but is not far-fetched. In 2018, it was revealed that the United States runs a biological weapons program in Georgia that is hermetically protected from the outside world and not under the control of international organizations. There are also another dozen such laboratories in Ukraine, where biological weapons such as deadly viruses are tested on humans as if they were laboratory mice. The NCOV-2019 virus targets the respiratory tract and causes cough, fever, and breathing difficulties. The liquid can be discharged from the lungs, the airways can be cleaned and dilated, and oxygen can be released through the mask. However, these are only ways of relieving the symptoms. Antibiotics are useless against viruses, if you have a virus, the doctor tells you to rest a lot and gives you a lollipop. Antibiotics only help against back against a virus, your body's immune system is your only line of defense. The only real protection against external viruses is vaccines, but their development can take a long time and is not always effective. When the virus changes and the vaccine becomes unusable, the flu occurs almost every winter when doctors play around to guess which flu strains will spread this year. Some have speculated that 2019 NCOV is actually a severe acute respiratory syndrome SARS, that killed nearly 800 people in Asia in 2002. A DNA analysis of 2019 NCOV has shown that it is very similar to SARS, essentially a form changed. However, Chinese officials are attempting to distance this new bug from SARS. Perhaps they fear that the name will panic the public. So far, the keep calm and carry on message seemed to be in effect. And of course, there is a conspiracy theory on Wikipedia about the SARS epidemic in China that you shouldn't believe. Not because the US biological weapons program might have anything to do with it. However, new insights had emerged about the US biological weapons program, and the epidemic developed some 15 years later. In this regard, it is not unlikely that the Pentagon will test its weapons on the Chinese, of which the American regime believes that there are still more than enough numbers. Biodefense and funny money games that Bill Gates, helped funded per Bright Institute's coronavirus through B&M Foundation, called Germ Games. Gary Steingart's novel of 2010, Super Sad True Love Story, is set in a near future when the Chinese yuan is a global currency, and people all wear an apparat around their neck with Rate Me Plus technology. Personal details are displayed in public on credit polls, post on street corners with little LED counters at eye level that registered your credit ranking as you walk by. China has face recognition and credit score system in place already. Not science fiction anymore. The patent states, the coronavirus may be the use of vaccine for treating and, or preventing a disease such as infectious bronchitis in a subject. So basically, this is biowarfare against its own citizens in China and elsewhere. Create virus spread it through vaccine as a cure and rinse and spit. Money rolls in from government aid around the world and depopulation all rolled into one the capstone allies are just so much more clever than us bottom feeders. Not. I'm concerned our media has nearly suppressed educating Americans, and by the time anyone gets around to thinking about this seriously, it may be too late. Early Saturday, I bought MedGrade N95 masks, and then already, Amazon was nearly sold out of MedGrade, only non-MedGrade was left. Smart folks would recognize it's prudent to prep food, water, stash a little cash, and be prepared to shelter in place if it shows up in your neck of the woods. Trump hasn't stopped air travel from China, neither has the EU. 
If this is real, the oligarchs are trying to murder us en masse.